The Ontario government is introducing new measures to crack down on cell phone use in schools as that province sees, quote, an alarming rise in cell phone distractions in classrooms. To date, the Nova Scotia government has resisted such restrictions. Paige McPherson is with the Fraser Institute, a think tank that has spent some time looking at the research into the effects of cell phones in the classroom. Thanks for coming in to talk to us about this. Thanks so much for having me. First of all, what do you think about what Ontario is doing? Well, I think it's a really positive thing when we see provincial governments wanting to take concrete steps forward in eliminating digital distractions for kids in classrooms. But I would say that, you know, when I've reviewed the Ontario policy, they initially had a policy back in 2019. The goal with this policy is to strengthen it. I would say it doesn't really take those steps forward quite enough. The policy doesn't really have enough teeth. Uh, it leaves things widely up to the discretion of individual teachers, which is more or less what the policy is now, leaving it up to school boards. I would say that really if the government wants to eliminate these distractions for kids, which we know are very harmful for student learning, they need to give the policy as much teeth, empower teachers and administrators in schools to really take the devices out of kids' hands. I know that in Ontario, also in recent weeks for sure, but for some time they've been talking about the connection between the device, the cell phones in particular, and math scores, for example, or, mm -hmm. or basic learning to begin with. What, what are you seeing in some of that research? Yeah, so there's really interesting research that has come from the Program for International Student Assessment, which is a widely respected international uh, student test of 15-year-olds. And Canada is one of the countries that participates. It's OECD countries. It's widely referred to as PISA. So the Insights report from the most recent round of PISA data, which is 2022 data, showed a really close connection between a decrease in math scores and actually having smartphones in classrooms. What's interesting from the research is that it is, that it is worse if a child child has their own digital device or smartphone, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. Just having the presence of a digital device in the classroom, so if the child sitting next to you, for example, mm -hmm. has a smartphone, that can be just as distracting. Students report high levels of distraction in both cases, and the PISA data was actually able to, to tie that to a, a concrete reduction in student math performance. And that connection, you're seeing that in Nova Scotia as well, in some of those numbers, aren't you? Well, well, I would say that the, the Nova Scotia results are pretty concerning when it comes to the PISA math test scores. So from 20, 2003 to 2022, so about two decades, no, Nova Scotia students have actually fallen about two and a quarter years behind in math. So in other words, math students who were 15 years old in Nova Scotia in 2003 were over two years ahead in terms of their math understanding and competency than what those 15 year olds are in Nova Scotia now. So having smartphones that are distracting, that we have this concrete evidence to show actually can lead to a reduction in math scores because it's so distracting, is doing Nova Scotia students no favors. But they're also teaching devices and learning devices as well. I mean, is it, is it partly that they, that they need to be incorporated differently into the learning model? Well, I think that there are ways to incorporate technology and the advancements in technology into classrooms and schools. And we certainly see that in Nova Scotia and really in provinces across Canada. The question is, can students have their own personal digital device on them that's going to be buzzing in their pocket all day? The Ontario policy, the new one, basically says that phones need to be on silent and they need to be out of sight. But there's good research and um, there's a new book by Jonathan Haidt who highlights some of the research um, that was published in 2017 in the University of Chicago Press showing that just having a smartphone on you, you don't have to be looking at it, it actually reduces your cognitive abilities. So in other words, it's going to have an impact on learning. So we need to make sure they're completely out of the picture, not just in your pocket on silent. So we talked about restricting use of them in Nova Scotia classrooms, maybe even banning them over the years, but it's never come to fruition. That's never happened. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that, you know, the government needs to be bold in enacting these policies. It's not going to be popular with every educational stakeholder, with every teacher who's going to need to enforce it, with every parent. You know, there are parents who want to be in touch with their kids all day. We all know that this is a reality. So this is a, a politically tough policy in some ways. But in other ways, we know that it's popular. There was a January uh, poll from this year by Narrative Research showing that 8 in 10 parents in Canada wanted or would support removing smartphones from classrooms because they recognize that it's a distraction in student learning. So I think there actually is a fairly broad consensus around this issue. The government really just needs to have the boldness to, to put those policies in place.
Ontario most recently has looked at this and is making changes. Other provinces have already done that. Is Nova Scotia behind the times on this or, or how would you characterize that? Yeah, there are other provinces that are, are moving forward um, in, in other parts of the country, certainly on this. Uh, Nova Scotia, I would say, is, is a little bit behind the times. One way that we have a luxury here is that we can see the 2019 policy in Ontario, widely considered ineffective. Teachers said they just really had no power to enforce it. We can learn from those mistakes and we can use that to develop a really strong policy that's going to enable teachers and administrators to actually enforce these policies and give students the freedom to learn in a distraction-free environment. All right, Paige McPherson, thank you very much. Thank you.